Hello and welcome. This time we're talking about multiplex. Multiplex. It's not a cinema. It's not a shopping center. Ah, oh, we're talking about things we can multiplex or demultiplex. Okay? So this means shifting. A digital multiplexer has is a block with a number of inputs and one output. And with selection inputs, I can select which of the inputs I want to see at the output. A digital demultiplexer has one input and multiple outputs. And with selection inputs, I can select on which output I want to see the input. Okay. So basically, it's a switch which is switching an input signal to different output signal. This is a demultiplexer. And on the multiplexer side, it's a switch which is switching different input signals to the output signal. Yeah? And if on both sides I'm switching in the correct to the correct position, I have only one line between the two multiplexer and demultiplexer and multiple output lines. Yeah? So I can transfer data with only one cable. Yeah? This is done, for instance, serial bus systems. I will draw what I want to, to express. Yeah. So, if we do have here something, yeah, a multiplexer, and have here something, a demultiplexer, yeah, these things can have several inputs. I draw now here some. Yeah, and inside they do have and one output yeah? and the demultiplexer this is the max multiplexer and this is the dmax demultiplexer yeah? and on the other side I have one input and several outputs and what I can do, I can select the position of a switch. I can select it to the first, yeah, to the second, or wherever, wherever I like. And if both those positions are exactly at the same position, I only have one wire in between. Okay. So this is done at serial communication. If this is a bit here and this is a, a, a this is a byte here and this is a byte here, I transfer bit by bit, shifting, and in a rhythm, I switch all through all the bits. Okay. This is a max. This is a dmax. Huh? Must not be only six inputs. Can be two inputs. The easiest is a simple multiplexer, and this is, has two inputs. This can be reached by simply two ends. In the end, there is a OR. In the end is a OR. So here are the outputs. These are ends. I have two signals, okay? Two input signals, which are here. So this is the input zero, input one, and I have one selection input, okay? selection zero and with this selection input I want to select if I'm select zero this one or now or one so if s zero in this case is now this end is passing I need I get i, I zero here if s zero is one then this end is letting pass the signal on I1 
and I'm getting I1 here. So this is this is a simple multiplexer. The simple multiplexer has a, has a symbol looking like this. It's with max. Okay. Then we do have these three inputs. Here we have I0, here we have I1, and here we have this S0. This S0 is the so called gate input. And here is the common line. Common line. This common line is usually named as V1, and the gate input is G1. And here is written what needs the signal to be. Here we are not one, here we are one. So everything's inside the symbol. If we are if the gate input one is not there, I will see I0. If the gate input one is there, I will see I1. Exactly this one. Simple multiplexer. Of course, I can take the thing and make quite some multiplexes out of it. So I can I could do it like this. So we have here max, we have here a max, we have here max, we have everywhere max, here we have we ones. This is connected to here, this is connected to here. Yeah. So uh, this is a G1, it's also a G1, this is not one, this is one, this is not one, this is one, this is not one, this is one, there's a G1, there's a V1. Okay. And here I have three, four inputs now. input 0, input 1, input 2, input 3 yeah. and I need to select yeah. I need to select so I have here the selection lines S0 and here is the selection line S1 yeah. what does it mean? let's say you have 0, 0 this means here I have I1, I0, here I have I2, I0, I2, here is not, so I will see I0. If I have 0, 1, I have here I0, here I2, this is 1, I see I2. This is how this is built. Also for this, there is a certain, a big, quite big symbol which is reflecting this inside logic here a little bit. Yeah. Draw it big. Mm. I already questioned when this will be happening. So there's a max. Yeah. There is a G1 and 2 and a G3. Here we have connected S0. Here we have connected S1. These are the switching, switching inputs. Okay. Here we have a two-part approach. So we have we have here uh, we have here a V1. We have a V2. We have a V3 inside. And here we have not three. And three, here we have not one and one, and here we have not two and two. Okay, and here we have the inputs. E zero, I zero of course, I one, I two, I three. Here slipped into the German variant, E for Eingang, I for input, and here is the output. Okay. This is. 
this multiplexer. It's an M multiplexer because I can cascade it how I want. Okay. I can simply cascade it how I want. Uh, if I do it like this, yeah, for bigger multiplexers, there are a lot of things involved. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, elements are involved. So for bigger things, the, the the speed is getting slower. We must keep this in mind. Yeah. Big multiplexers, slower speed. I think it's it's clear to everyone, hopefully. Of course, I don't need to have this uh, this kind, yeah, because, like I said, if I'm cascading these multiplexes, they're getting longer and longer and longer. Yeah? I could even do it like that. Yeah? That I do use ends. Yeah? I have four inputs, I have four ends. So here are my ends. And here are my inputs. Connection of the input. Input zero, input one, input two, input three. And all of these ends are connected by an OR. Or uh, this is my output of my multiplexer. Now I have here two lines S zero and S one. Uh, we are going down. And here I just have to select if they should shall be there or not. Yeah? So if no nothing is here, I will take I1. Yeah? If only if only S0 is here and not S1, I will take I1. Yeah? If only S2 is here and not uh, S1 is here, not S0, I will take I will take I2, and if both are here, I'll take I3. You see, there is no cascading. This is fast, simply. This is simply faster. Uh, however, I need quite big and at all blocks. There is also a certain symbol for this, which is reflecting this method of multiplexing. There's of course also this head thing here, with S0 and S1, yeah, this is a max, yeah. this is uh, the gate signal 1, this is the gate signal 2, yeah. and here we have the input, 1, 2, 3, 4, I0, I1, I2, I3, I have the output here, yeah. so this is V1 and 2, and I only have to write what shall happen, not 1, not 2, yeah. 1, not 2, not 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Symbol for this type of multiplexer. So. You see, multiplexing is not that complicated. Demultiplexing operates exactly the same way, but then this would be the output. Just have this end, this this one, it's pulling to all ends, and the output I'll take. So, multiplex. Multiplex and demultiplex, often used in communication, yeah? or transferring data to somewhere else. Yeah? Time multiplex, multiplex, 
share one one wire and if you think about if we have to switch those switches at the correct time on both sides yeah, it's no wonder that a lot of serial bus systems do have a clock line where they simply send a clock and in the rhythm of the clock they will switch further if you don't have a clock line it's rather complicated because then you have an offset and so on but actually those things are solved you should know how these things look like and what they are okay. that's it for the logic yeah. the next thing we are going to talk about is converting analog signals to digital signals so some values to numbers yeah. and vice versa numbers to values yeah. so we're talking about digital analog converter and analog to digital converter how they are working for this video, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.